everybody already? Yep. Yeah, we're all set. We're all good. Okay, we're ready. I'd like to call the meeting to order at 530. And first on the agenda is, um, okay, any changes or additions? Just a brief update about logistics. Sure. Right, so there's a, obviously we all, you can see that we changed the room back. The reason we did this is to accommodate a new uh, video camera system called the owl we're borrowing it from the village um it is somewhat interactive so it's gonna be hard for me because i use my hands a lot but if you make a lot of movements it might track you inadvertently it is intended to follow who's speaking so we don't have to have a camera person here and the people on zoom can actually see who's talking um after we get the, the uh, missing piece we're going to put it in the middle so then we'll have them easier flow for the select board, but it should be used for the planning and DRB meetings. I miss anything? We, this is ours, we borrowed mm. Morris for one, I'm like, test it, but this is ours. This one is ours, that's yes. correct. Yep, yes. this is what we intend to use going mm -hmm. forward. And you said the DRB and the planning council are gonna use this also? That is our intention. That's our intention. Yep, we we're working it out ourselves, but as soon as we get this under, well, yeah. Next meeting space. No, not the next meeting, but you know, like Todd's on vacation. I'd like to not surprise him on his day back, but yeah, we'd like to we'll use it. There. Yeah, we'd like to use it going forward. Judy, did you yeah. want to say anything it's about? It's more user friendly. The um, where <laughs> the video will will be, or is that? Audience. But is that is that going forward later on? Like it'll be not be the YouTube, it'll be something oh. else. I was just going to stay on GMA TV's channel for the select board. Okay. But I did create a YouTube channel for the town of Morristown. And we'll put up DRB planning, uh, et cetera. Uh, YouTube has restrictions. You can only have, like, our select board meetings can only be on the YouTube channel for GMA TV because you can only have one recording, the recording in one place. So it will be a little confusing because there's um youtube for select board on the gma tv channel and all others will be on our channel um anyhow okay what we're working on okay yeah. thank you but you're it's welcome. not it's not finalized no, yet no i'm working on it okay thank you you're welcome um like to approve the minutes from um january 16th 2024 i'll make a motion okay. to approve the minutes from january 16th 2024 second. i'll second those i have a motion and a second and any discussion? Don, was that is that the one your name was? Oh, my name was wrong. On yeah, yeah. Dan. Don's Change. name was Dan. Where is that? It's That's okay. Five thirty um, on the very first page. Dan and Don will call the select to me. It's my twin brother. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the only that's not really an amendment. It's just a typo. The typo. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then under the six eleven p.m. community comments, the word education is misspelled. Not a typo. All those in favor of accepting the minutes from January 16th, 2024? Aye. Aye. Minutes have been approved. Approved minutes from January 29th, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from January 24th, 29th, 2024. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from January 29th, 2024, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> And minutes have been approved. Um, need to go into. Um, that's the wrong one. I'll make a motion to recess the select board meeting and open the board of liquor and tobacco control. Thank you. I'll second that. Okay, get a motion and a second to go into liquor control. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Was there something mm -hmm. you wanted to say? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, just after you did that. <laughs> And so we don't have Sarah here tonight. No, but she and I reached out to the police chief and he has no issues with the um, licenses being proposed at this point. Okay, and, and then we, we see that uh, Jason Luna, our chief of police, doesn't have any issue or problem mm -hmm. with any of these applicants for the liquor or the tobacco. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. We have to do each separately. 
You can do them at the same time or separately. Okay. Okay. I'll All make right. a motion to approve the liquor license renewals and the tobacco license renewals as presented. No okay. So we have a motion. Um, any discussion? All those in favor to approve the liquor license for Black Diamond Barbecue and the tobacco license renewals for Global Montello Group Corporation and DB Jiffy Mart number 686. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? But the motion is passed. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn the Board of Liquor, Liquor and Tobacco Control meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of adjourning and coming out of liquor control and tobacco control? Aye. 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 Okay, we are out. I'll make a motion to reconvene the select board meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second to reconvene the select board meeting. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are back at the meeting. So our first one, next on the agenda, is the assistant health officer appointment. Yes, so I'll frame that up a little. Um, the assistant health officer has been a position that um, it's necessary for things like dog bites. Uh, there's not a job every day or even every week for this um, position, but it's it's necessary when the zoning administrator is gone, if there's a dog bite or um, occasionally there's a few other things, but it generally um, calls for it a dog bite response, and that's a statutory response. Um, and I'll combine it a little bit with our number three too, because the same person has come forward to fill both positions. Um, animal control officer is something that is pretty necessary in a municipality to um, follow up with dog complaints, but also just to, to uh, enforce the ordinance and encourage compliance with registration, people getting their dogs uh, licensed. It's a public health these dovetail with each other, but it's also a public health concern. That's why we require dogs to get their rabies and things like that. So Bruce Emerson uh, retired from PD has agreed to be this, uh, both our assistant health officer and animal control officer. And he's here today. So if you could come up briefly and just say hello to the board. Um, he has, is willing to do this on an on-call basis. It's not all the time. Um, he has experience in other, of some other municipalities dealing with animal control. So I appreciate your willingness to take this spot. I hope I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. I know where I've met most all of you. Um, I come from Stowe. I was a police officer there for 27 years, and most of that 27 years we handled all the dog complaints and did all that. So I'm fairly well versed in what it entails and we'll see if we can get things started rolling here and see how it goes and we get the program up and running at least and then see where it goes from there. I guess I would ask you, how are you with cows? I, I live across from a farm and cows are always getting out. <laughs> so the position is worded as the dog office, yes, but not cow office. <laughs> 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 Just yeah. out of curiosity. So, uh, as I told Gary and talked with Jason, you know, it's going to be somewhat of a, a fluid thing, yeah. you know, figuring things out. This weekend, we had a call or whatever for service for helping someone remove a ferret. That's not <laughs> happening. So, <laughs> it's going to be, you know, primarily a dog officer. Yeah. If I can help with other things, That's you know, we'll saying. talk about it. And, and I'll do what I can, certainly, but it's primarily a dog officer. Yeah, because I know I call, uh, and they usually call, <clears throat> uh, but, That's right. you know, it's like. Right, I and mean, we help out as much as we can, but riding the range and, you know, rodeo and our, right, the, yeah. And just, can I ask the, um, uh, I, know, I know about the animal control. Is mm -hmm. the assistant health officer also an hourly? Uh, uh, we're going to do, uh, yes, on call. On call is mm -hmm. okay. It's a part time on call basis. Um, the difference is the animal control officer or dog officer. We can call them. I, I'm used to calling them the ACO, but we can, we can work on that. Um, is appointed by the manager. Mm -hmm. The assistant health deputy, deputy health officer is the term the state uses, is a state appointed position that the select board needs to approve. 
So that's in part why, why Bruce is here and why I'm bringing it to you. Um, I'd like people to know about both positions, but I'm asking the select board to appoint Bruce as our deputy health, um, health officer. I just want to say thank you, Bruce, for stepping up. Brian Kellogg was the person who was our animal control officer for so, so long. Brian and worked a lot with him between Stowe and here and figuring a lot of those out. I hope this doesn't scare you away because no one else seemed to want to do it. But Well, that's why I'm here. Thank so you. Did, but like I said, we'll hopefully get things up and running and yeah. we'll, we'll take it from there. Anyways, thank you, Bruce. And just a quick question too. Um, where did, didn't someone step up that would would take the dogs until? So I talked to the kennels, and there is an agreement that I haven't met with them, obviously, okay, because yeah. this hasn't been yeah. official until tonight. So that is one of the next steps. Is I'm going to get something cemented okay. with the kennels to have something because they're not coming home with me. Yes, yeah, because I remember Jason was talking about that. Um, we had a Correct. person had stepped mm -hmm. down, so we're, that's in the works. The kennels has changed hands, but yeah. I've already talked with them and they said they're willing to work with that's the kennels and stuff. Right. Yeah, so we're going to work on a contract just so we have something binding mm -hmm. so there is a place to bring those animals. Mm -hmm. Kate, you don't have that very often, but a handful of times a year, you might have a rabies hold or you might have a dog who we can't find the owner right away and they have to go to doggy jail for overnight or something. Well, I've had people come in and go, I'm here to post bail for my dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of feels like that. Carrie, do we need a separate motion for each of these? You don't need a motion for the animal control officer. I do need one for the deputy health officer. Okay, I'll make a motion to appoint Bruce Emerson as the Morristown Assistant Health Officer and authorize the select board chair to sign the form. Second that motion. So a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just the official title is deputy. It is deputy, so I'll just amend that deputy motion. Deputy health officer. Mm -hmm. It is. We're good. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks so much. Okay, so we're moving on to town plan update. Yes. Do you want me to start? Yes. Please. Can I just ask? Yes. I'm just a little concerned that we're discussing this and that <clears throat> all the interested parties aren't here. Todd's out of town. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, is it appropriate to try to have this discussion without some of the key players? What players other than Todd? Well, Todd. I'm, so you know, I've I'm, talked to Todd extensively. Um, you know, we've had two or three meetings on this. My impression was we need a regionally approved plan. Um, Todd staffs the planning council. I know he's a key part of it, but he staffs the planning council. So having a discussion about whether the select board and the trustees and regional planning and <clears throat> um, the planning council itself will would like to move forward with this doesn't really require that that staff be here for that and he explained his concerns to me and i i was listening and i heard them but he doesn't need to be here for this but just because he was instrumental in actually I mean, he wrote it and drafted it so but it's not regionally approved which is my biggest right. concern right. i have no dog in this fight right no everyone yeah. knows i'm the substitute teacher here yeah. but not to have a regionally approved plan right now is egregious in my mind we need yeah. to have this done the downtown or village designation thing much later other issues with the town plan I yeah. I don't expect the planning council will move everything aside just to deal with the entire town plan but it's my impression mm -hmm. that regional planning has has um, educated me that they can just amend what was uh, declined no there was another legal word for it um deficient with the plan and why it wasn't approved regionally last time like you can do have a five minute meeting about okay. the short paragraph that needs to be changed that they found um deficient or defective because my understanding was that he had been the liaison for the whole thing writing it and was the liaison with the uh, with the council. That was my concern. Well, he when we had a meeting, he specifically said his relationship with regional planning was very cool and he didn't want to talk to them. So I don't think that's the very definition of a liaison. I thought okay. by default, because he didn't want to do that, I was that liaison because okay. I was kind of neutral. 
It doesn't have to be me. It certainly can be him going forward, and I hope so. But right now, the relationship seems to be a little cool. So there's enough of us here, and this isn't something that even involves me working with regional planning for more than a, an hour a week, a week at the most, right? So I can do that if the relationship isn't working right now for them. Okay, just trying to understand. Yeah, no, it's a good question. I'm sure others are thinking it, but there's... Oh, excellent. Um, but no, there's no there's no malice it's just we need to move things forward and um i don't see the harm in doing it today okay. he can catch up and he know i know he does by watching meetings so hopefully he's not watching it tonight and he's on vacation <laughs> in some place form but um yeah so i i definitely intend to meet with him you know when we come back and i i think it's most of the board probably knows there's only a small part of the regional plan or our town plan that needs to be addressed and it's the transportation section and it's basically one or two sentences in that transportation section that need to be addressed and that we have to demonstrate we have a collaborative relationship with the rest of the um, members of the mm -hmm. um, lcpc and when i say lcpc it's the board and the board is consisting of uh, uh, representatives from each of the communities in lamoille county it's not the staff of Memorial County Planning Commission. So people, uh, just to be aware mm -hmm. of that, it's not the staff making the decisions. It is members of the community representing from other towns right. in, in Memorial County. And I think it's also also worth noting that a town plan is a guidance document. We're not we're not suggesting in any way uh, a law, a local law. It's probably not going to change anyone's life a whole lot when this gets approved because it's just a suggestion. <laughs> Actually, if you don't mind, I'd like to read the suggestion we're talking about because I didn't read it for about a month and I thought it was a very long involved thing, but it's only a few sentences. So this is the, um, these are the changes as I, we understand it that needs to go into our town plan so that it will be approved. Um, it's a section like Judy said on transportation. Therefore, this plan encourages open communication with our neighboring communities through Route 15 and Route 100 that pass. It's a we'll have to clean that up a little bit, but we are supportive of designated initiatives of village centers and downtown areas which protect pedestrians and bicyclists. Turn that one. We support the reduction of the speed limit in the area of the rail trail crossing in the town of Johnson, which increases pedestrian bicycle safety. We will work collaboratively with our neighbors to help them be aware of the negative impacts in our community that may occur with any result of slowing traffic outside the village center and designated downtowns. That's it. That's the whole section. We're just basically saying you will work with your neighbors and I don't know if you guys can debate it now, but. And we don't need to have a motion. We just need consensus. I think you do need a motion for this okay. yeah, to forward it to the planning commission, but I didn't know if there was any other okay. discussion so that needed to happen. Why don't we do happen. a motion and then we'll open up for discussion. Yes. I'll make the motion that we uh, accept the proposed rewrite. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what to call it. But, uh, is there a section that transportation talking? section transportation section mm -hmm. i'll second that okay so we have a motion on, 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 any discussion any discussion from the board first well i just i i guess i just want to say that um you know the the individuals that i've talked to well i i i guess i feel similarly to carrie that we do need a town plan that is regionally accepted. It is um, egregious, perhaps, that we we don't uh, that we don't have that. Uh, it's been a number of years that we haven't had a town plan that's regionally accepted. Um, I have done a little bit of homework. I've talked to Tasha, the Tasha Wallace, the director of LCPC, executive director of LCPC, and she sees this as a small lift and seems to feel that. Um, if we if we alter that language, the transportation language that this town plan probably will go through. Um, I did attend a village trustee meeting not too long ago, and uh, uh, although they they didn't take action, it seemed like uh, 
perhaps there there might be a, a, a similar sentiment there, although I'll let them speak for themselves. I, I, I really feel like it's time for the town of Morristown to have a regionally approved, a regionally accepted uh, town plan. We are missing out on literally hundreds of thousands of dollars right now because we don't. And uh, we've spent a lot of time in the last 12 months. I've spent a lot of time listening to people talk about paving and talk about sidewalks in particular, and that's just one item. And uh, in the past, we have received literally hundreds of thousands of dollars to help with those kinds of projects, which we are not eligible for right now because we do not have a regionally approved uh, town plan. There's more to it than that, um, but I'll, I'll just leave it at that. So I'm very much in favor of the motion that Laura's made and uh, would hope that we could get through this quickly. I think it's a small lift. I don't see this as a big issue that's going to take a long time to get done. And I would hope it would not take a long time to get done. We've not had a regionally approved plant town plan for a number of years. And uh, it's time to get time to get back on track with this and move ourselves forward in a lot of directions I besides just what I mentioned. No, it's okay. Go ahead. I will say having, I was actively involved in this town plan and this actually the line that was in there was a highly contested line from the public. And so and I remember um, as a public person, we were actually really disappointed that the town plan went through with that language. So um, I know there was a, a lot of people who actually were not surprised because of the language. So um, I totally agree it's, it has language language too long was some confusion as to at, at what it would take um, to do it. So if it's a matter of changing the mm -hmm. sentence, mm -hmm. I mean, I know some of these people were here who remember that. Um, so I, I don't think we're going to have any pushback from anybody, but they can speak for themselves. So this line as we have drafted it, it's a rough draft, is not contentious. The contentious line was not, taken out. Yes. And when we did, Judy and I were both on the board and voted in favor of that town plan as it was. And speaking just for myself, I did say at two separate select board meetings, I will vote for this town plan because I'm being told that it is amendable. And we did have that discussion. So here we are. We're at that point where we need to amend it. And the time, time has come. Um, at that point, the reason this went through, I think, in May of 2022, give or take a month or two, it might not have been May, um, was because I think this legislative body and the other legislative body in town were kind of tired of all the iterations that the town plan had gone through, and it was time to, to push it forward. So we did, and we are where we are right now, and it's time to fix this one, this one sentence or these two sentences and, and move on. So I will point out, I know when I talked to Todd, he was concerned um, that there was a number of things in the town plan that the planning council wasn't thrilled with. Um, I don't expect that this that will all be resolved right now. I, I think the message for us to the planning council is please consider approving just this transportation transportation section. And if you're done with the S100 later this summer or fall, then Maybe that's time for removing all of the other things he mentioned, but I don't have a number of them. He just said there was a few. Um, it can be done next year um, as well. This isn't the end. It's a constantly evolving thing and a plan is just a guiding tool, guidance document. So I think, honestly, <clears throat> um, I think the consensus on the board is, is that um, we would like to see the language change and have this town plan move forward uh, with, with this amendment. <clears throat> Understanding that down the road, um, there may be other reasons to um, do some revisions, but I think that our fiduciary responsibility as a legislative body in the town um, sees this as a priority um, and a pretty minor fix. With that being said, you know, we've invited at the end to be here, we have Scott 
up here. We have other folks with interested parties here. Mm -hmm. I guess I'd really like to hear, um, you know, we've talked about it. I think everybody knows our cards are on the table. How do we move this forward and, and, and how can we work board to board? To, no, um, I wanted to hear from the board first before we opened it up. Okay. So, Richard, did you have anything to say? Okay. Tam, would you like to say anything? <clears throat> Yeah, just introduce yourself and you come to the microphone, please. Uh, Etienne Hancock, uh, Planning Council Chair. You can sit. That's fine. <laughs> We'd actually prefer, I think it's easier to, for the camera to pick you up. I know it's no. a little weird, but okay. <laughs> get a bigger table. Um, the, the council had prioritized this after S100, uh, step one, which right now is scheduled to end more or less in the spring. Uh, these would be the amendments that we'd like to make to zoning to help to manage what S100 or Act 47 uh, will do our local control of zoning. <clears throat> and we don't need to get into that right now, but right now that's in council's priority. Um, number two, and then we can go back to these and uh, have you respond with direction, uh, is that the last communication I was a party to uh, was a town council email from December 5th that said, that because of Act 47, we could not amend or extend the plan until there was a regional planning commission sourced town, uh, I'm sorry, housing needs assessment that was uh, provided to each town, to which then each town would write a housing, rewrite their housing chapter to meet. And I'm forgetting the gentleman's name, hmm. but Jim Barlow, I think, was the attorney that wrote that opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So we just need clarification right now. Has that problem been solved? And he was incorrect. I think that when I and I don't remember the email from verbatim, the question that was asked, I think Todd asked the question. Jim answered the question. The question that was asked didn't affect us opening up the town plan for what we want to do. So there was some, it wasn't clear in the email, the way the question was written and the answer. I'm not saying this uh, clearly, but it didn't answer our question about could the town plan be open. I believe Carrie did contact Jim Barlow after receiving that email. And we found out that yes, we can open it up and just address this one issue that we're interested in addressing. The difference is amendment versus extension of the town plan. I understood correctly. We can amend something, which is to make a minor <clears throat> change. And mm -hmm. that doesn't change uh, the duration of the plan when it expires. But an extension, we would have to reopen and revise all the chapters that uh, state laws have since changed, uh, which was an open question. In that email on December 5th, I apologize, I, I, I reread a lot of this stuff over the weekend to make sure that I was correct. But you just remember all of it? <laughs> okay, so 12.5, <laughs> got it. Um, he said it was not amendable or extendable without changing, making the Act 47 changes I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So if you've clarified that, if you've corrected mm -hmm. that, then all we need basically is a copy of that email that says it's okay to go forward. And then also that there's no problem with LCPC since they're the regional planning commission mm -hmm. that's mentioned in Act 47. I mean, I did speak earlier today with Tasha and she actually is on yeah. on this call um, and she didn't have an issue with us moving forward. Um, Jim verbally told me he didn't have a problem with us doing that for the transportation section. I think it re it goes back to what you just said, an extension versus an amendment. Okay. Um, he, I didn't have a legal opinion, but I mean, honestly, if if we're comfortable moving forward, we, you know, kind of protect. If that is. Would you like to hear from Tasha? Because well, she's on the she's on there on the um. I'm here Zoom. because I was asked to be, but also just to seek direction. So sure. It's it's not. Yeah. As long as you're speaking as one, uh, which was yep. really a, a condition we outlined in the fall at the planning council read, the, the, to make this amendment after all. Difficulties you mentioned in 2022 getting the town plan mm -hmm. completed. We need to have everyone agree yes. to this so that time's not wasted. Correct. So that's that's good. Um, 
And then the, the next question is simply, uh, we can skip the other items that you mentioned that the Planning Council has trouble with because this is just an amendment, uh -huh. not an extension. You can email them to me. It'd be great to know what it was, but uh, you know, it can wait. It's flood not resiliency, urgent. the housing chapter, and then uh, the gravel changes in particular. <clears throat> um, that one brought out the pitchforks and the lanterns. Okay. At the end of the summer for us. Um, porches, not lanterns. Uh, the other one is schedule. So Act uh, 47 changes, the S100 changes. Mm -hmm. Uh, right now, that's our priority, which we try, we're trying to finish up in the spring to do a zoning change in order to prevent certain types of development that this enables, especially in our low density areas of the village. I haven't heard, I haven't heard a directive from you yet as to, uh, should this be this town plan amendment to be ratified in the next meeting, the next month? After S100, Act 47 is complete. What is your? I would think directive? as soon as possible. I mean, I, I guess we were hoping that it could be done in the next month or so. I mean, it's not. Um, it's a five, five or ten minute thing. It's more of, of what we have to do to warn meetings um, and things like that. Yeah, and, so, and I believe that was Todd's concern. It's just the, the warning, mm -hmm. the need to attend all these meetings and fit it all in. I mean, I'm hoping you can do them at the same time you're already meeting, but I also talked to, to Todd a, a few weeks ago about hiring a part time zoning planning assistant to um, help when he's on vacation to do something like this to keep it on track and I was thinking one day a week so somebody can do that and ensure that this stays on track within an hour or two a week um, and consulting with an attorney on all the legal parts right and he can oversee it. You know, say, hey, this is what I have. I'm going to warn the meeting for this night. So I, I don't think we're we're asking you guys to meet six times a month. It's just maybe add five or ten minutes to an existing meeting, um, and make it a hearing for the town plan when appropriate. Otherwise, just wait. There's a lot of waiting for the town plan. We're going to hopefully initiate this, but a lot of, as you know, not, not everyone might know, you have to warn it 15 days, then you have to wait 30, and then you have a little meeting talk about it for a few minutes and then you wait again and you repeat yeah. that three times so twice at your level and once at our level it takes it takes a little bit of time even when we say we're pushing pushing isn't like all next month now do we need to do this for the transportation section or is this just for the um, extension for the act 47 well that changes? the extension the the Act 47 is something different. That's why yeah, we were just just for the yeah. Every time you amend your you approve your town plan, it has to be. It's meant to be a little laborious, so you you know community doesn't do this every month, but yeah. you have to do it for both. Just that one. Amendment. Yeah, it's just that one amendment. You're not going to change any other word. Correct. Right. Right. Just that one amendment. Right. Mm -hmm. And whether we change it now or change it later, we're going to have the same waiting period. So those you know the 15 day warning and the. You know the the thirty day um, waiting period is going to be the same no matter when we do this. Right. So that's why I thought with a part time person helping Todd, making um, and hopefully helping if it starts to get pick up when it gets uh, warmer out, um, that we can keep keep everything on track and okay. not impede your progress. All right. Then. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to mention that Etienne is the chair of the planning council. Some people may not know. Thank you. Um, does anybody else like to speak? I know, Trisha, you have your hand up. Yeah, uh, listening to this whole Are discussion. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Wait, I, wait, Trish. <clears throat> We're working through some technical difficulties. It's okay. I got volume. Try to try it again. Hello. No, nope. can't hear you. Let me make sure I get the right. Good <laughs> <laughs> thing our IT person's here. Try right now. Hello. No. Nope. Are you muted on your end? No, she's. No. It, thank you. She's unmuted. Thank you, Scott. Sounded like it worked. <laughs> we still can't hear you, Trish. Can anyone else speak, um, Dennis or? Can you hear me? 
Yeah. Tasha, can can you speak? Can you? No. Tasha, have you are you trying to speak? I am. I'm trying we to can't, speak. We can't hear you either. We can see that you're trying to speak, but we can't hear you. Judy's gonna try to reboot, I think. Yeah, well, it's not as wise. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anybody else want to speak while we're Anyone else in the audience like to speak? Yeah. Have a comment? Well, sure. Yeah. Um, so Scott Johnstone, village manager for Marsville. Um, so generally speaking, I think there's alignment on this. The trustees have not voted, of course, um, so I can't tell you exactly how they'll vote. Um, what they have, as you heard from uh, Don, um, um, and talked about this a fair amount. So on, on the town plan amendment, I think the notion that keeping it really simple and narrow to the transportation, moving it forward quickly and rapidly and seamlessly all seem to make sense to the trustees. The matter of downtown designation is one that they're doing their homework on and trying to understand what I call the puts and takes, what do you get and what do you lose, if anything. Um, so they've been doing their homework on that. So I, I don't, that's, not, that's not an open or closed book yet. Um, but on this matter, I, I think they generally support keeping it narrow, keeping it simple, cleaning this up, getting the town plan approved, and then that enables the rest of the, makes the rest of the conversations meaningful, right? <laughs> but I think um, two of the trustees are here. If I've said something that they disagree with, I'm sure they'll tell you. <laughs> um, but um, I think that's where we are um, at, at the village level is, is getting it done. And we agree it should be a fairly simple matter, five or 10 minutes to you know, um, do this, and then it'll take a number of months to actually get out the hearings. And make that work. So um, I generally think we're supportive. I'm sure those two will tell you if I've misspoken. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. you. <clears throat> we should be all set. Tricia, you want to try it again? Yes. Yeah, yeah. we can hear you. Great. Hi. Thank you all for addressing this. Um, as you know, I've been very involved in the application process and in Disney downtown for a lot of years. Um, I did want to say that. Etienne was asking about, you know, if these small changes, this amendment could go through. Um, I know Gary Holloway from Agency of Commerce and Community Development had gone to see the village trustees and him and I have also talked back and forth. He checks in pretty regularly with me to see if we are going to reapply for designated downtown and did very clearly say from the state side too, that we could make this transportation amendment. And that was all that wanted to go through. Um, the other thing is I heard Etienne asking about a timeline. I think at this point, um, as you know, we've been dancing with this uh, thought of designated downtown and do it, redoing the town plan for two plus years on it. I think it would be great if the select board could give them some directive as to say, can you put it in your, you know, this, move it up so it's in your uh end of February meeting packet. So you make that change and you start warning it now. Um, you put it, if they leave it the way they had it, and I, the email that I had originally seen from Todd with the timeline was July. I mean, that you're talking six more months and then six more months or a year out after that. If you could back it up into February, I think it would be for the good of all. And I think it, it's feasible, like Carrie was describing. There's a lot of meetings and a lot of uh, spans that you have to warn and wait and warn and wait. And I just think it'd be really good if the select board could give them some directive. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, Trish. Trish. And just to be clear, what we are talking about tonight is only the town plan transportation update. We kind of talk and interchange the downtown or village mm -hmm. designation thing. We can't apply for those until the town plan has, is regionally approved. Right. It's a prerequisite. Did you hear from Tasha too? Yeah. Um, I don't know if she wants to say anything. Okay. Um, Tasha, did you want to say anything? Oh, can you hear me okay? Can you see me okay? Yes. All right, thanks so much for including me today. Um, I really appreciate this. And I just wanna say, I, I'm so pleased to see the town moving forward. Um, I know that um, the board of the Regional Planning Commission was very disappointed not to approve the plan. And I can't speak for them, but I can assure you that 
the language that you have discussed today was the only sticking point for them. Um, and Judy, you're on that board. You can speak to that was, as well uh, when discussing the plan and deciding not to approve it. So we're very excited to see the town moving forward. I'm happy to answer any uh, or be of assistance uh, regarding any process issues going forward. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tasha. Thank you. Anyone else? So um, just Tricia mentioned clear directive. Did, I, I think thought we were, had given clear directive. Mm -hmm. Did Jane, do you feel that way? Yeah. Okay. I, was, I, was I think she we're said good. That, yeah, I thought so yeah. too. I was like, <laughs> Is that's not another hand up? There's a white hand there. That's not no, no. okay. <laughs> All right, that is a little misleading. <laughs> so we're ready for. Do does the board feel they're ready for the vote? Yes. Yes. Okay. All is in favor of. Um, do you remember what the motion exactly was? It was to accept the um, the language change for the transportation section of the town plan. Okay. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We have accepted the town plan change amendment for transportation. Um, highway garage feasibility study. So I put that on the agenda after, um, I think it was one of the first meetings that um, we had last fall that I attended, there was a request to analyze whether or not the two town garages would work for the town, um, both the Old Creamy Road and Cochran Road. So I think the first step is that we need to analyze where we are, do a space needs analysis, figure out the feasibility of using uh, Cochran Road for all of our operations or not, and how much where we should go from there. So. <coughs> There's, there's some basic steps when you do large projects. As most people know, you need to do the feasibility study first. After you do the feasibility study and you know how the space is being used, how the space is going to be used, we ask department heads you know, questions like, how, what, how much equipment do you have? Where do you store this equipment? Where do you want to store this equipment? Um, going forward, how do you see the, depart the highway department changing over time? Some of it's a little subjective, but this person that we're hiring should be able to guide us after a pretty thorough analysis of our two two garages. And just to be clear, what we're considering here is an RFP for a consultant to look at the. Uh, yes, sorry. I know I skipped you, over you, that part. you said I was it. all excited about the you feasibility said, part. <laughs> you said it and uh, to look at a feasibility study for Cochrane. For the Cochrane Road facility. Yeah, for both really, but it's largely on Cochrane, right? Land that the town owns. There's real, you have a little real estate over there. What's the feasibility of combining the two? Certainly in my mind, this is a great idea. This is, you know, we, we need to do this. We need to find out, you know, what, what Cochrane Road has to offer us. Um, it is a piece of land that we own. And uh, <coughs> if it is feasible to put together in a garage on land that we already own, that makes a lot more sense than going out and buying new land somewhere else. And um, if it seems like that garage is worthy of uh, putting some money in to fix it up so that we can consolidate our two garages on one site, that further makes sense. Uh, as those of you that have been at many of our meetings recently, you know that we're paying an awful lot of money on old Creamery Road for a village, uh, village garage so i i'm very much in favor of of this uh this uh you know the language that we're looking mm -hmm. at and the the rfp proposal and the other beautiful thing <laughs> once you have a document with an executive summary um done by a professional you can use it to apply for grants yeah well, i think too that um you know it's unsustainable what we're paying in lease agreements um you know although we do appreciate it as a, a really nice facility over on old creamy road but it's just not sustainable for us in the long run and we'll never own that building um so um, this is something that i think that i've been talking about for some time now i'm full on board with moving forward on this feasibility study and i think in conversations with carrie um it's clear that two things one is is that 
we're estimating some potential costs of between five and ten thousand dollars potentially but I, you know i think that that's going to be um, in the eye of a holder moving forward and there is money in our budget to for contract services to do that so so i brought it hoping that you had time to read it and looking for feedback so that we can issue it this week or next week um, because this meeting, we're not meeting again for three weeks. I don't want to lose February. February is when a lot of these type folks look for work for the year. So even if they can't get in to see us in April, it'll be this year, hopefully. Would you need a motion tonight? To... Um, I was looking for consensus. I can issue okay. the RFP, but this is a big deal and a lot of people are curious about it. So I brought it for both reasons to you um, using a template I copied from my former employer. So hopefully there are no more St. Albans Town references. <laughs> I, have a, I have a couple of questions about scope of work. Um, Fair. Because, you know, um, the buildings, uh, you know, as you're addressing with the fire building, you know, uh, the, determining what we need for the exact existing equipment, mm -hmm. there's always the question of, is this the equipment we actually need? Mm -hmm. And why I mentioned this is that um, there was um, a while back, we had a smaller plow truck. Um, and because I live on a particular road, um, as does Tony Cody and others that were developed to be plowed at 20 foot, mm -hmm. and we went to a bigger truck. And so now everything's being plowed to 24 foot. And there was discussion as to, uh, you know, going back to that. So um, how does this play in that, I mean, smaller is always better. We can always fit in smaller, mm -hmm. um, but will this feasibility study address that or is that uh, that and if the employees, I'm assuming is the next phase, that this is strictly buildings. Is that well, correct? it's a little of both. So when I did the feasibility study last time, we had um, an architect to work with some structural engineers to interview employees about what the current space needs were so mm -hmm. what are the size of the trucks how many trucks do you have specific like an inventory and it gave and they gave us a grid showing current use and then there's another whole column that says expected use or future use so obviously the future use is subjective and it's a bit of a guess but talking with enough people these architects know um, life safety systems, they're the ones required to know what kind of egress you need. Um, you know, that I had one called a sniffer test, but to make sure that there's no carbon monoxide that builds up in a building, what are the new regulations? Because if you renovate, you have to be current with all the current regulations. So it's a little of both. So they talk about um, staffing when they do that analysis, both for office space needs and for the equipment. Because one of the things we built in our new garage was a meeting space that held like 30 people because there's a lot of on there's a lot of sharing of information in the state of Vermont so we would have training classes there regionally for people and it was just super convenient to have that um, and also two full site two full bathrooms in each one in case there was a huge snowstorm that lasted for four days um, our highway department is going to stay um, stay on they're going to be able to shower and eat and cook and uh, keep the roads open as much as possible so it's a little of both okay and you uh, you'll have some input as it goes to like part of the meetings here isn't just to send a, a consultant to dpw and ask for a christmas list it's a this is what we need going forward and then the select board can look at it and and if there's any outliers we can talk about it and uh, the rfp um, do we have a plan of how this goes out just for contractor or I mean um I don't have a set plan I was talking to G Judy about trying to engage some local um, firms whenever possible but I've, I've also used a state like works in progress or mm -hmm. other um, sites at some of the locals so see we've got a, a deadline here um, February 27th which mm -hmm. uh, could come up quick yeah, I mean, that's three weeks away. So yeah. sometimes you target certain mm -hmm. firms that you know in the area. It's that... pretty specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But I mean, we made the deadline. So if, if Judy and I can't um, get to tomorrow, some days we don't get to do anything we planned. So we'll, we'll push the dates a day, or, a day or so if we can't get it out on time. 
So you just needed um, you just needed a consensus, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. And feedback, obviously, active. I'm gonna get feedback right now. I'm sure. <laughs> I really wanted to be quiet tonight, but I can't because I've already brought this up before. Would you mind having a seat, sir? I'd rather not. I know, but I then the. Really. I guess it'll work if you want to. I think stand just there. introduce yourself this one time. Uh, Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. Thanks. Mm -hmm. My idea and many taxpayers' ideas are to have an outside garage to park 10 trucks under it, just like the one that MSI has over there, mm -hmm. at least until the taxpayers can get their feet on the ground. I can only speak for myself. My taxes went up $800 last year. Taxes are probably going to go up over $1,000 again this year. We've got to draw the line here somewhere. So when you talk to employees of the garage, they're going to want the Taj Mahal. That's only common. That's that's what they're going to do. You say two bathrooms, showers, kitchen. Mm -hmm. We don't need all that. Ten people say we need that. We don't need that. That was used as an example of what we did in yeah, town. That. But now you're using it to say that we've already decided that's what's happening here and that's so far from reality okay uh, i don't know what a pole barn there's, is either but we can we, you we're can gonna go right next to the town garage yeah. over there and there's two buildings yeah. before mm -hmm. you'll see it oh, i've driven by it a number of times yeah it's a perfect setting for what we need mm -hmm. for this town right now until we can get our feet on the ground thanks mm -hmm. thank you jerry um you were the project manager up in Elmore. Did you have an opportunity to take a look at this? Do you have some thoughts? I, I just looked at it uh, briefly. So, uh, and tell us who you are, too. We know who you are. <clears throat> Jerry Throne, uh, Morrisville. So yes, uh, I am the current project manager for Elmore's new town garage. Uh, that garage is uh, almost ready to be occupied. Uh, and uh, so, uh, first of all, the uh, supposition that you could use a uh, shed type of building for uh, uh, all the equipment is is fine if it's summertime in the winter time it uh, is very problematic um msi does not store their equipment in that outside shed they have an inside facility that's heated and that's what they use uh, the only equipment you see outside there is equipment that's not going to be used um, i took a look at the uh, cochran road garage and uh, it appears to me that uh, that's a fine facility. It may not be big enough for all the equipment that has to come from um, the uh, Creamery Road uh, facility that we're trying to to uh, uh, replace with another, another, another facility. But we have a lot of land there in Cochrane Road, and there's no reason why we couldn't use the existing building. Uh, looks like it's in fine shape, might need a new roof, but uh, you know that's not. <laughs> you mean Cochran Road when you say that? Uh, I meant Cochran Road. Yeah, Cochran Road. Uh, yeah, that facility, you know, it it looks fine. It, you know, I mean, I didn't do a, an extensive uh, analysis of it, but that's what we'd be paying a consultant to do is to analyze the structure, analyze needs for uh, uh, for the town, and you know, it, it just makes sense to do something like that. Um, as, as far as you know, Taj Mahal. Well, that's up to a consultant that we're hiring to make recommendations. They're not going to make recommendations based strictly on what uh, the highway uh, town employees want. They're going to make recommendations based upon their background, their knowledge, uh, and, and and we're going to want to hire a consultant that has uh, 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 consulted on these type of projects before so that they know what the needs are they know what the bare needs are they know if somebody wants something that you know like we want color tvs or, or something like that you know in in the facility if they don't think that it's it's uh 
the type of thing that is is needed. They're, they're going to know that stuff, and uh, really should, because that's that's their job. That's what they do. So um, I don't know what other questions you might have for me. Uh, you know, as far as my experience, having having just completed a project of a similar size, it's a four bay garage, and uh, the project was 2.1 million because that included a lot of site work and it, and it included uh, you know, a lot of a lot of land uh, development. Did they, they ended up purchasing land there. I'm sorry. Did they end up purchasing that land there? Yeah, they, they bought the land, but that that was in addition right. to the construction cost. So that was a site. You said what you mean by that is it was just open land and they didn't have any infrastructure on. Correct. Right. No. So no site work had been. It was farmland. Okay, that's super expensive. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No, thanks, thanks, Jerry. Very interesting. You're welcome. So, so I'm good. If you have any other suggestions up to this, let me know by tomorrow, by noon. But otherwise, right. we're going to go with this. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Carrie. All right. And, and I. Don't have any other surprises there. Next on our um, old business communication with the press policy final. Yes. So I want to. I got a couple emails. I want to clarify a couple things before we start this. Um, part of my reason for bringing this up was that I just wanted to formalize press releases. So we all, we seem to be, and I've heard a, a, a few questions. I've fielded a few questions from the public about social media posts. This policy, this communication policy is intended to um, apply to newspaper press releases, or if something um, happens and Channel 3 or one of the news stations calls, they don't usually give you more than a couple hours notice, right? So I wanted to clarify that if somebody calls me, and especially if it's a good story, it's not always bad, we're assuming it's bad, but sometimes it's good. Um, that the public knows and that you know as a board that I'm going to be that person, that point person, and whoever's elected the chair is going to be that point person because they almost always want a sound bite. And I'd prefer them not to find whoever is walking down the street at that point. I'd like them to find the chair of the select board or the town manager because I'm usually available. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that's what the intent of this policy was, not for social media. Um, and also, you know, by electing a chair, you are electing the person who's speaking for you. So I don't think this policy either supports or detracts from the chair's um, responsibility and obligations as a chair, as Robert's rules, which I keep harping on, but as a board and organizing the board, you elect who you want to lead your group. like. In a jury room, you elect a person to do that for you. It's the same government structure. So this doesn't help or, or hinder the chair's ability to talk to the press if you've already elected a chair to your board. Um, it's just meant to formalize it. That being said, if it causes discord, you know, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. I'm here to support you. So. No, I think, as we said before, when we considered this, Clearly, the intent here is to avoid misinformation, it's to avoid getting a mixed message out there or to get a different message out there. And if we can limit the number of people who are the messengers, clearly we're going to maximize that possibility. I mean, most of the time, the chair and the manager will talk together before something urgent, right? It just doesn't always it doesn't always happen. So, well, too, I mean, it gives uh, I think pretty. Clear Clear uh, vision in terms if somebody reaches out about specific things to any employee. Correct. Um, that that gets funneled back to the town manager, mm -hmm. and then you would work with the chair to respond to that. So it's not just a select board <clears throat> policy; it's basically an employee <clears throat> policy right. that says the one voice will talk about things that the mm -hmm. press inquires about. It's true because I, I mean, I, we have a good relationship with a local reporter, but I've also had reporters take advantage of an employee and pull things out of context. And you're right. That's another rather critical part. 
you don't want them to keep calling people to get a response. Um, they should know without anything on the table, like this isn't personal, just know that you shouldn't be calling town employees for quotes. Well, I, I will uh, <clears throat> speak because I had objected to this. And, you know, I was on planning and DRB. Um, and, you know, the it was very clear that the chair was the spokesperson. Um, it's a little bit different in the fact that you've got, especially with DRB, there are very clear decisions. Um, and I, I do remember when I was on DRB uh, discussing that going forward, we needed to be very clear about stating what um, the statute was or the law uh, that we were basing our decision on um, so that it was very factual um, to clean up any kind of misconception that it was, you know, the DRB was making these arbitrary decisions because that had been a complaint. Um, you know, there, uh, it worked, very, it has worked very well. It's very clear, um, you know, again, basing the statutes um, planning does the same thing. As everybody knows, there has been uh, issues in the past uh, with with chairs speaking and uh, voicing personal opinions or, uh, and again, I'm in, spent my whole life in PR and media, and it becomes very, diff it, very hard to speak to press and speak factually and not adding any kind of your own agenda or uh, making it a sales pitch. And that has been my objective as I have a really uh, strong objective um, when things are, have been hosted that uh, to me are agendas and are very much sales pitches. Um, you know, and I will speak to the budget. If you say this is the budget, it's, you know, it's going up this amount, we're dropping it, you know, by dropping it down. But when a whole dialogue starts about everything, I have a, a, a huge problem with that. Um, and and the name calling, name calling has been a significant problem. Um, and uh, you know, I have, uh, given that we're in transition, I have recommended that you know it be the manager initially, um, because we, it just hasn't voted well. And and I think our current election is a true sign of nobody wants to be on this board um, and it's really troubling and I think a lot of it has to do with um, very specific things that members of this board have said um, and have put on social media and I think it's really really concerning um, and so I, I'm very hesitant about this communication policy um, just carte blanche giving a chair that they are the spokesperson and i have to say you know there's been conversation about once something is voted on we can't speak out and i will say that if you know and i, I will check with bclt but i will not stand for the name calling and that has got to stop um and so that is my concern and why i'm not uh real gung-ho about this communication policy currently even though I just said it doesn't have anything to do with social media. Like what's your uh, objection other than social media? Because I don't- Well, there was an article just in the paper. Okay. You know, um, yeah. where, you know, um, groups were called conspiracy theorists as we're trying to get people to, to run for this board. And I was just absolutely disheartened by that. Um, and, you know, and we're, you know, the, we have nobody, we have an open seat, it's unheard of to have an open seat that somebody doesn't want to step up for it, which means that we, in theory, are going to have a board of four people. We as a board have to, I think, analyze why, after you know we've made significant changes, why are we at this point where nobody has put it, is willing to run? That's trolling. It's embarrassing. You know, I was talking with everybody at Stowe, you know, what's going on over there? You know, and it's just this, we, it, we, it's got to stop. We, and we've got to do, we've got to look at ourselves because we are the ones leading and stop blaming people. There's, you know, again, the fact that nobody wants to sit on this board, we as a board have to ask why and do some hard analysis as to 
Um, and I am, so I'm very leery about giving any one member of this board um, the power to speak. You already have, <clears throat> but that's fine. You can you can dis disagree, I guess. I, and I agree with you. We, in theory, have. Um, and I think going forward, when um, uh, that when we elect the chair, it will be more of a pressing uh, matter. It will, it will, it will, we will take into concern into consideration because I don't think it was before. And I think going forward, I certainly will be very careful about who I vote for and, and nominate, mm -hmm. knowing that they are representing this board. We're just not there yet. Yep. Recognizing though that if a quorum of the board agrees on something, you move forward. I mean, this, like I said a month ago, <clears throat> is, is not the Supreme Court. We don't issue dissenting opinions. It's just the board as a whole. Once three out of five of you agree to move forward, that's what you do. That's how you I, you make it easier to work in this position. So, I understand that, but I'm worried about liability. There have been things said by chairs that have opened us up to lawsuits. And, um, and the and and this was previous, and that's what I have concerns about. I, I hear you, and I I can, I'm concerned about liability every single day, but I don't think yeah. this rises to that level. It's just we need to be more, and we are more professional at the meetings. That will encourage others to come. It's it's a challenge, but I you know I, we don't need to belabor it. I guess you can approve it or not approve it, but. Um, I just, I just felt it. Yeah. I guess, Laura, in response, I would say, I hear what you're saying, but if we don't adopt a policy like this, then it is somewhat of a free for all. And we have basically, we're saying we're going to let any one of us, and for that matter, employees and chairs of other boards and members of other boards, um, kind of have free reign to do what they want at least given what you said at least this does greatly limit and i think this is what carrie is trying to do it greatly limits mm -hmm. the number of individuals that are going to be communicating with the press we we've all <laughs> we've all lived long That's enough to know what we've all lived long enough to know what the press can do and what they're capable of doing, and um, and if we and if we have too many people being spokespeople, it seems to me it's just a matter of time until we get ourselves into a quagmire. If, as this policy, I believe, is attempting to do, if we greatly limit the number of individuals that will be conversing with the press, then. I, I can't say we're absolutely never again going to have any problems with the press and the statements that are made in the press, but uh, we're, we're, we're certainly going to, it's going to be an attempt to minimize it. And that's what I see this policy as, as, a, as an attempt to minimize the misinformation that is spread out there. And I again agree with you, but we currently have a policy in place that I have stated, I have quoted multiple times that says, uh, and it comes from you know, BCLT also saying that um, that uh, no one has the right to speak for the board unless the board has approved it. That has not happened. So that's already in place. Um, so in some ways, this is actually a duplication because um, that's already clearly stated that um, you know, the no, uh, and it's, I believe it's open meeting, I usually have it here, but um, stating that no one person can speak for the select board unless uh, the select board has designated that person to speak, uh, and it says the select board, you know, we're already changing. And so, um, and I can say I have worked on both planning and uh, DRB, and we followed that and it was never an issue. Um, so I think this is somewhat duplication because it's already there. And generally, it, I think in practice, I agree with everybody. Uh, I just, it, again, our board, um, and you know, I can I can give you plenty of times where I, I, as a citizen, I've come up, and you know, things were said by the chair that the no one on the select board spoke up about, and it, I mean, it was some horrifying stuff. <laughs> and you know, everybody was like trying to respect the chair. And again, I don't think it's going to be an issue going forward, but the, I just I have huge concerns 
um, because there was a recent article that just came out in the newspaper um, that, you know, was very disheartening to me. Me so. too. So, so that's, you know, and we had discussed the communication policy and yet it still happened. So that's, that's where I am. And, yeah. I'd like to move forward with the conversation here about approving this. Would you like, you want to do a motion? Sure. I would move to uh, adopt the communications with the press policy um, as uh, presented to us this evening. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to uh, any discussion? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. My name is Tom Fulia from Marstown, and uh, I have no problem uh, with the policy as written, which we have here right now. Uh, no concern in respect to you, Carrie. You, uh, you've been here for only a couple months. Sure. And this, this board and the board before it, we had a history. And it always hasn't been so cordial as it is right now, as it has been in the last few months. Uh, my problem right now, and I would recommend, is tabling this for 28 days until we have a new board and a new chairperson. We brought this policy up on the 26th, uh, on the 16th of last month. On the 18th, an article was in the News and Citizen. And I don't want to get into the exact words of it. You all saw it. I sent you an email, what was said there. That's two days after the policy. And now this policy you have, that person would be responsible for speaking for the whole board. I get a list pounds long on, on insulting words from the people to the residents. I don't have to go through that because you know what they are too. And I don't want to go in the past. I want to look at the future. I don't want to be doing that again. I didn't enjoy it while it was happening. I didn't enjoy it two weeks ago reading it in the paper. And if she's correct, we should have the names of those people. Oh, goody. Now, how did I get my sound back? <laughs> and we get oh, the names bad. of those people, and then they, we'll get rid of <clears throat> the conspiracies, which is it's unbelievable. There's no conspiracies. We have disagreements. In the past, we had disagreements and arguments. No interim town, we've had disagreements. We have an argument once. I think we respect each other. It hasn't always been that way. So I am asking that you hold off or take the chain chairperson's name off the policy and all directed to carry. And that will relieve you of the pressure of talking for the world for the last 28 days. That's all. Thank you for listening. I know. I know. It drives me crazy. <coughs> Sheila Tarbox. I also have been very upset since that article came out. And I kind of couldn't believe it because everybody agreed, okay, if we're going to be nice, and we have been, I thought, you also should. And that article was not very nice. It was going back to the same crap that we had been through for months. And to us, enough's enough. You may be hurt, but there's a lot more people on our side also hurt that don't say anything about it. That's all I've got to say, but that can't happen. 
Uh, Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. I always try to say what's on my mind. I'm a concerned taxpayer. That's it. A concerned taxpayer of Morristown. That's why I say what's on my mind. That's it. If I'm talked about in the paper, it doesn't bother me that much. But I think uh, somebody should be talking to Mr. Gardner. I don't think he has to report all that stuff. But, and I know you guys can't get into that, you know, but maybe tap him on the shoulder, you know, but that's between you guys. But that's all I am as a concerned taxpayer. So if I say something nobody likes, that's the way it is. So ready for a vote? Yes. Okay. All is in favor of the accepting the communication policy, the press policy. Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion is passed um, four to one. One nay. Okay, number two, certificate of no appeal or suit pending brand list. Correct. So we talked about this uh, again last fall. Um, then there was a few questions, some actually some really good questions. Um, and looking into it, um, that request is a little premature, but Abby is positive at this point that we're supposed to consider it now and hopefully pass it. We don't have any pending litigation or appeals. So it's... Uh, recommended that you consider making a motion to approve this document or i guess it's called a certificate of no pending litigation and appeal so i just have i was going to say i just have one question okay. that is that the document says no work no earlier than the first mm -hmm. tuesday of february following the lodging of the grand list the first tuesday is tomorrow it sure is. so we can't sign this tonight is that correct i would say that is true so, Seems like it's the fifth and it would be past that, but yes, I can agree. we make a motion that this be signed um tomorrow? Tomorrow. Can. But we can't sign it tonight. Correct. Okay. Fair. Mm. So the motion would just simply say that we accept a certificate of no mm -hmm. appeal or suit pending uh, to be signed uh, by the select board. Um, <laughs> Maybe Wednesday to be safe. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. After uh, Wednesday or by the end of the week. Correct. By the end of the week. Yep. Do you want to make that motion? I just did. Yeah, second. <laughs> <laughs> second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion is passed. So and just to be clear, we need to be in by the end of the week to sign that mm -hmm. certificate. Don't make Judy chase you. <laughs> Uh, so uh warrants i'll make a motion to sign the warrant to approve the warrants as presented second um a motion any discussion all is in favor to approve the warrants aye aye, aye. warrants uh, motion is passed community comments <laughs> no? Okay, I uh, hearing seeing and hearing none. Um the schedule. Did you want to review that? Don't we review it? Review um that. either one. Just leave it here. It's uh so the schedule currently right now, Monday, February twenty sixth at four thirty, will the, the charter committee will meet. And then following that at five thirty will be the regular select board meeting. <clears throat> But that'll be included as our informational meeting for the budget. And I'm assuming um, Shep's going to be moderating that meeting. Yes, he has said he would do that okay, for good. us. Yep. So and we're going to concurrently open the informational, legally re required informational meeting and the select board meeting, and then just take care of the informational meeting first. Okay. For Shep, in case he has to leave. Oh, good as idea. As much as he'd like to, I don't think he wants to attend our meeting. <laughs> And Tuesday, March 5th, from 7 to 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., will be voting, in-house voting or in-person voting. Yes. And ballots are being sent out. 
I talked to Sarah today. She said that they would be sent out probably maybe Tuesday, but probably Wednesday next week or by Wednesday oh, next week. Okay. So they're Should coming out right away. Something like that. She said before Valentine's Day, they will be sent. All right. So that would be Wednesday. So Wednesday is 14th. So mm -hmm. if we tell everybody that, that <coughs> they'll be mailed on the 14th, we're kind of clear. I think so. Yeah, yeah, she said by the latest, the 14th. I mean, obviously, it's dependent on us getting them. We don't have them yet. Yeah. And they're coming from, um, do we know where they're coming from? Because they, originally last year, because of the whole COVID thing, they were in Barry and they drove them up to Essex or something. Yeah, I have no idea. Crazy. Sarah, as the town clerk, is the election official. Surely that's yep. been. I'm ready. And yeah. They're all going to be set first class. Yes. We talked well, about that. Uh, 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 post office, local. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, it'd be local. We're over there. The post office is over there. We're we're hiring a, another company to do the to do the mailing. Do you what? There's another company hired to do the mailing. What's that cost? Yeah, uh, it doesn't cost a whole lot in addition to postage. I've I've done the comparison. I'm not this year, but they get a bulk rate as opposed to us just running it through our meter thousand few thousand times well and the, i think the time uh, sarah calculated out all the mm -hmm. um, time of paying the justices and stuff and that we actually were saving money because it's very time consuming and school board yeah yeah it, it was it, it was incredibly labor intensive you know they've got a machine down there they just hold it since and that's you know, i know but then the worst one mostly the department doesn't make any money it's real it's just saying. Nobody knows. It's a <laughs> just meeting. educating them. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 we discussed. Yeah, I have a bunch of. Okay. I'm just saying. That's on the 26th. That the, the, the man. You mean the charter committee? No, no. I'm the, oh, the manager committee. I don't we, know. We have it for another day. Okay. Not not scheduled yet. The ad went out last in January. Okay, so we talked to her. We talked to her about that. Um, I'm on the review committee and I haven't had any communication from Dominic um, about um, any applications at this point. I think his goal was to get to the finish line in terms of the application date. And then he was he would consolidate the um, the resumes and applications and reach out to the committee after that. So we haven't received any further communication. The date again was to have somebody hired by the end of the month. No, no. Was there no. A, de a, de a deadline for the submissions, though? It is. It's it's toward the end of February. Okay. Originally, it was going to be February nineteenth, but I think he was going to move right. it back a week. And then you wait. You schedule meetings usually a week or so out. So it, you know, in March you might Start have February. right have a date for end of Not that we want. It's fine. <laughs> it's, a, it's a temporary position intended to be. <laughs> Other business? I move to go into executive session because I find the premature general public knowledge of contractual negotiations will clearly place the town at a disadvantage by disclosing its negotiation strategy. I second that. I have a motion and a second to go into executive session. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I further move to go into executive session to discuss pending contract negotiations under provisions of Title I, Section 13A1 of the Vermont Statutes to include Interim Town Manager Kerry Johnson. Second. I have a motion and a second to go into executive session for pending contract negotiations. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed. We're on executive session.